Um, Nemesis was cleaning up some kills on her own at some points in that late game, but we got picks and bands ready for you here for game two, and it's a three-game set that we're playing here totally, so Burrito clean this up. That's it for Victoria's Secret. That's true. Burrito would then advance to meet Poppies in the next round. For the run back. The run back. You know, it was <laughs> a, they were tied with points earlier on last week, and then right. they split their two-game set, forcing it to go to tiebreakers. Poppies end up winning it, which puts them at that seventh seed position, so that allows them now to kind of watch over the competition and see what some of the tools were used. And I'm glad you brought that up, Tolly. This is the exact match that they played to try and avoid in particular. They, you know, you don't want to go up against that Challenger Cup team who's riding a lot of momentum. They were the top Challenger Cup team. So maybe you're the one coming off some losses. They're feeling good off some wins. And anything could happen in a three-game set. So that's what they were fighting to avoid. But Burrito looked good in game one. Oh, absolutely. But there's also another interesting aspect to take into consideration for the next round is like, right. do you want to come in hot or do you want to come in cold and watch the, your earlier opponents on? A lot of players will prefer to play hot and then just keep playing non-stop right off of the momentum and keep going. We saw what happened with Oxygen Supremacy, that 7-2 yeah. impressive run. And especially because Burrito didn't show anything in game one. So even though, yeah, Poppies get to watch, what Burrito have are they've gotten warmed up. They're ready to play. They've seen themselves recover from a deficit, Tolly. I think that's what's really big about being able to play early is that they know they can hang around even if they fall behind and Whoops, Savannah's pick coming out a little bit early. Not too bad, honestly. And we're going to see a lot of control now from Burrito with that one pick. But what Burrito were doing in the early game and first game was giving too much respect to Victoria's Secret. Yeah. They found a pick, but then it was actually Victoria's Secret that ended up getting the goal fury. Some weird shenanigans happened, and they're getting a small, substantial lead. And then after that, Burrito were like, all right, hold the brakes. We'll get it in the late game once a few slip ups happened. They're going to take that Osiris and Jingwei one more time from Burrito. They liked how Kaspanify was looking on that last game. But Victoria's Secret making the call to ban away that Nemesis after her big impact. Yes, the Nemesis is just not an ideal opponent you want to no. deal with, especially if you don't want to build a lot of sprints. There was just too much action happening for Victoria's Secret to keep up. If you're going to use your sprint offensively, then you're not going to have it defensively against that Nemesis ultimate. That could have been the key determining factor that allowed Burrito to get back into the game. Nike is going to be the selection for Victoria's Secret. We don't see as much Nike nowadays, but that health shield is potent. That's very true. But more importantly than the health shield from her ultimate is her passive. Oh, the way yeah. she's able to just get more mobility, more damage for the rest of her allies. Once you get those three passive stacks between farming minions, between getting 10 kills for your team, and between getting 200 minions collectively as a team, that's what kind of leads you to victory. And if we thought Burrito had damage last game, Thanatos and Zeus were the last two pickups for him, and that is a ton of damage, especially early, totally. I'm really surprised that Victoria's Secret didn't recognize that Zeus was a very viable option for Burrito, paired up with Sylvanas. Yeah. Every time Sylvanas is in an SPL game, nine out of 10 times, random number, nine out of 10, <laughs> it's gonna be a Zeus followed up shortly after, and Victoria's Secret not really respecting it, and surprisingly, last pick in this Kuzinvo, a lot of control with that ultimate. Kuzumbo could potentially have a matchup here against Zeus with that Reflect. Yeah. Is it enough if he's standing in that ultimate to return that? It depends on how low Zeus gets initially. It's not yeah. going to be enough to 100 to 0 the Zeus with just Thorns, with just a Carapace. But if the, any sort of initial damage from Victoria's Secret can happen and there's no Aegis for Farrow Creek, then that could be an opportunity. And it's the Kuzinbo jungle. That's something that we've seen over here in EU before on Captain Twig. So Frostiac is going to be the one that takes it. And Gorgonzola is going to be taking Nike over into, into the support position. So what is it that that, that that Kuzumbo does in the jungle that's got Frostiac picking it up here? Well, considering he went blink, similar to the Kukulin from last game, is going to allow him to do the ultimate play again, right? But instead of one knockup, it's going to be several knockups over and over again. And as long as Frosty can go behind his opposition, he's going to be knocking Victor, I'm uh, sorry, knocking Burrito closer to his own backline, doing the true damage that they need. And Spudio on this Hu Yi, Mr. Stefan on Soul. I mean, they've got a lot of follow-up damage if that setup is there. 
there for him. So it's certainly an option. Gorgonzola taking a good bit of poke in that mid lane on the Nike. As once again, we see our Guardians hanging out in the mid lane, which is something we've seen a lot of to make sure they're able to get that early pressure. I like the fact that they're running this Nike in the support position, allowing Julio to play an aggressive Kakolin, match Sibby's aggression on the Osiris, and that's a key factor because Nike in the Solene does get bullied, unfortunately. You don't have your second ability maxed out primary, you're looking to max out your rent, your lane clear, and then you max out your HP 5 ability that also augments the rest of your abilities, but as a support player, you don't really care about that necessarily. You're just looking for the engages and then allow your auras to just benefit your teammates. And in game one, I feel like we didn't see a whole lot of invades coming out. Both teams are kind of sticking to their own sides of the jungle. Now, though, we see Fusify going up very far forward, along with Ferrocrick and Johnny, to try and make something happen on the speed buff, or at least look for a pick. They're going to try, but it's a four-man collapse, though. The rest of Victoria's Secret are prepared for this moment. A nice little route there onto Julio with Sibby following up. Speed buff still being looked at. Speed buff could be taken away. Sibby going in to zone out multiple members, and they were able to go in and successfully get that one. Now they're on the retreat to try and get away. Victoria's Secret popping the sprint from Gorgonzola, but not doing anything with it, even losing their speed buff. This is not how you want to start off an early game. If you're going to pop a relic like that, you got to make a play off of it or don't use it at all. And I like this from Burrito. We saw in game one, like we said, they kind of stayed back. They maybe gave Victoria's Secret a little too much respect in that early game. They didn't want to fall here in the gauntlet too early. This game, though, they're playing real aggressive with that combination between Johnny and Sibby in that solo jungle, and they've stripped away both buffs. And not only do they have the aggression between that solo jungle, they have the sustain from their support. Fusify able yeah. to make that rotation. Sitting at level 2, he opted to go for the, the root at level 1, the heal at level 2, and that allowed Burrito to make that speed buff aggressive play. Spanify even able to split those oracles, even in the 1v2. So that's big to not give away that vision and also to keep some of that golden XP for himself by helping to get those oracles. Now, Victoria's Secret, though, they've got those timers on that right-hand side of the map totally. Speed and blue, they're going to know when those are up. Yeah, but unfortunately, they're not able to control the rest of the map whatsoever. Elementals were prepared by Burrito and just devoured and not able to find the gold that Victoria's Secret really need here. They're struggling a little bit in the early game, and more importantly is the experience. Look at the mid lane versus the other side. You know, there is a bit of an experience gap in our mid lane between these two teams. But once again, look at Johnny and Sibby. They're playing up into the jungle, looking for Mr. Stefan, who's rotating in. They do both have their ultimate, while Frostiac does not have his. Fusify was able to rotate in, getting away from those Frostiac from that root. That's going to be enough to keep them alive for the moment. And they're too early for these buff spawns, but just looking for picks. All about forcing out some of these abilities. The Sapray was used very early into that little skirmish, and that's going to actually allow Fusify to maybe look for these back right harpy steals by himself. When was the last time we saw this? Is Sylvanas stealing away back harpies. The solo Sylvanas invade. That's what a, a play. hot play, Tolik. What a play. You don't see that one? Yeah. yeah Bumpa's yeah. mask, as the cameraman pointing out there, onto the support. Normally, you want to go into the low nose mask simply because you're allowing your teammates to get those last hits. You're going to get the bonus in HP 5. And not only that, once you get the 75 stacks, you get a 400 gold investment return. But Bumpa's a allows Fusify to make that back Harpy Seal, even getting level 5. And look at all these level 4s from Victoria's Secret. It is a lot of ultimates in favor of Burrito over Victoria's Secret, but there really wasn't an opportunity for them to make a big use of that, that small advantage that they had where they were up in experience over Victoria's Secret. So now, just about everyone's turned over, except for Frostyk in the jungle, actually even a little bit behind Gorgonzola. Not wanting to make any plays happen quite yet before Frostyk hits level five, but instead, they're probably gonna wait for that level seven, eight, maybe even nine marker, whence they're gonna look to aggressively position themselves in that jungle. Fusify, though, wants to take control. The speed has respawned, and here comes Sibby. It was Frostyak who used the blinks. So that's not going to be available for him on this Kuzumbo when they, while they try to feed this, defend the speed buff. Sibby is the one playing forward, zoning at two members, but it's the Zeus ultimate, along with Fusify on the Mr. Stepan, who's got the Aegis ticking away for him to keep him alive. Ferrokick, though, cleans it up. I believe that was the detonate, but the rotation over from Spudio helps him get the return on to Julio, who gets credit for it. He was an execute threshold, but no commitment by Johnny not pulling the trigger there onto that guaranteed kill. Now 
it's Sibby is the one that could be in trouble. Gorgonzola knocks him up. Julio's here, though, with the Mez. That's enough for him to clean that one up. Sibby falls, and it's two for one overall in favor of Victoria's Secret. Johnny, I'm surprised he didn't pull the trigger there. That was a guaranteed kill, and not only, granted, he would have been under the tier two tower upon landing. So more than likely, he would have either died or been like about 25% health or less after the fact, considering how many other Victoria's Secret members were around that corner. But there needs to be trust in your teammates to potentially bail you out of a sticky situation if you can guarantee yourself a kill, especially with a Thanatos execute. Despite those kills, though, Burrito still sitting up over a thousand gold. So they're still the ones with the with a little bit of a lead helping them out at this point. As you said, Ferrocrick still a good bit ahead of Mr. Stefan. Level seven to level five are our mid laners right now, and we saw the impact Ferrocrick could have. It was a one for one trade, mid mage for mid mage, but more importantly, it was Mr. Stefan that fell first, allowing Ferrocrick to get the important experience of that kill, and not only that, the patience from Ferrocrick to hold on to that detonate. Wait, knowing that the Aegis was going to be used by Mr. Stefan and then just confirming it with that last hit shows why Ferrocrick is a top tier mid laner. The bright spot for Victoria's Secret though is Julio over here in the solo lane who's out in front of Sibby, picked up both kills in that prolonged fight that they had, knocks up Sibby. Frost takes here as well, but they don't have enough to lock down this tanky Osiris. No, not at all. It's so tanky once you keep building those stacks. 2% physical, 1% magical damage mitigation per stack of that Osiris passive, and you're really looking to spam your abilities to make sure you get that damage mitigation online. And then obviously being able to walk through minions, enemy gods, and player deployable walls is just a little added bonus. Johnny is here now, wasn't able to find anything, so he doesn't go in in this engagement. He did have his ultimate available, so that could have been the call, but instead, looping back. Just want to clean this one up the old-fashioned way. No ultimates needed. The disruption from Ferrocrick, or from uh, Frostek was not enough, but Ferrocrick does get Mr. Stefan, so across the map, two quick kills for Burrito. The beads from Johnny was very important to prevent himself from getting consistently knocked up under that tier one tower. Confirming the kill gives him the health back that he needed, that he took from the tower initially, and not only that, that kill has given him two stacks of that Rangna's mask, and upon completing that, item, this quest item. He's going to have more cooldown reduction, more penetration, and more mobility to really make the plays happen. And that kill was really well executed by Burrito. The gank onto Solo. And it happened while it was happening in mid, so we didn't quite get to see that one as Kaspainify looks to try and contest um, and left. We saw for a while Sibby was the one that initially held onto that tower aggro, then had to throw it onto Johnny, who was like, hey, I know I'm going to have that pass. I'll be able to get this healing back once I clean it up. Dude, that gank executed perfectly. And now Johnny's looking for the speed, but he's alone. Going to have to use his ultimate to get away out of trouble. Trust in your teammates is what Johnny did under that tier one tower. But the rest of his teammates not there by the speed buff side. It was a nice calculated attempt, recognizing that the ultimate wasn't used in the earlier engagement. You have a get out of jail free card and Johnny cashing that one in. And now it's Johnny and Ferrocrick both, the mid jungle, who are a far and ahead of Victoria's Secret, ahead of Frostiac and Mr. Stefan. And that's what's really important here in the mid lane is that mid jungle solo. How are they fighting? Absolutely, and Burrito are exploiting it by invading the speed buffs repeatedly or attempting to invade it. Whether or not they're successful is another story. They've gotten the first one initially right off the bat, and then that kind of put Victoria's Secret in an awkward position where they're like, all right, well, we don't have the mobility, we don't have the experience to keep up, and with this kind of a lead and deficit from Frostiac and Johnny, there's a three level gap between these two junglers. And that three-level gap's going to be coming up pretty big. We've already seen Johnny have a pretty big impact, and Frostiac on this Kuzumbo has been having a little bit of struggle. We haven't gotten to see him use that blink that he picked up the way that I think he envisioned to. Not able to make the offensive plays because all the offense is coming to his team instead, needing to make the adaptation plays happen. And he's just trying to farm up, honestly. He's just a little turtle trying to make it big in the world. Well, hey, he's able to get his back harbors. They don't go to Sylvanas this time, so Frostiac can enjoy them. I mean, you know, sometimes a tree steals away from a turtle. Sometimes a, a tree steals from a turtle. That is a that is a totally classic. I feel like there's some wisdom that, in that, there somewhere, that, totally. That, that's quotable. You can yeah. quote me on that one. There's definitely some wisdom in there. We'll, we'll mine that out a little bit later as we do see those gladiator shields coming on already for Julio in the solo lane. So he has a, a little bit more impact than Sibby just right now. Sibby's not too far behind, though, so likely just hasn't had a chance to buy it just yet. 
But uh, that is something where if they fight right this moment, then Julio would have a bit of an advantage. That's true, and that could be a determining factor of whether or not Burrito wants to be aggressive on that side of the map. Now Sibby's going to back. He's going to finish off that item just in time before the speed buff respawns. Also picking up two regular wards, and that's important to just catch the rotations from Victorious and look to find someone to exploit, maybe force an early disapparate or an, or an early Aegis out of Mr. Ste Stefan. And Fusify all game has been looking for those free pulls. No setup, no help with them. Just looking to see if he can pull back in someone out of position. He does get the root off and the pull onto Gorgonzola, but there wasn't any immediate follow-up. Just trying to force out some relics. Fusify recognizing that the minions were getting pushed under the uh, Victorious Tower, but the rest of his teammates were not interested in looking for the maybe play. Maybe the root into the pull happens, not wanting to overextend because, like you were talking about before, that blink play from Verostiak hasn't happened yet, but once it does, that's going to be very annoying for Burrito. Looking to contest this red buff, our Burrito, because Banefy and Fusify here blink in from Fusify, knocks up two. Mr. Stefan what? gets blown up way too fast from Banefy. That's a kill going his way. Farrakrik now rotates in to try and help out, but Gorgonzola way too tanky. Johnny, though, in the back cleans up Frostiac. Two kills across the map for Burrito. I was about to say, where did Mr. Stefan go, but where did Frost? Rostia go as the execute happened under that tier one mid tower. Not afraid to pull the trigger onto that one. Spudio needs to stop this Gold Fury attempt. It's already less than a thousand health, but he doesn't have the suns. He just has one ricochet in a dream. The ricochet is all he has. He doesn't even have that anymore as he jumps back over the wall. Now able to keep Gorgonzola and Spudio zoned away is just Johnny. And Johnny might be looking for a little bit more. He's still going aggressive despite them securing the Gold Fury. He gets stunned out, but he's okay. He's got the little happy trees to heal him up after that, and that's going to allow Burrito with the first objective of this game. And the earlier one was Victoria's Secret that was able to strike first blood in the objective category, but this time Burrito, they got the momentum after coming back from that first game. The tree might be in trouble in the mid, though. Frosty X here to try and help clean it up. Fusify still clinging to life just barely, and he does walk away. The Those scythe. wisps keeping him going, and Johnny takes down Frosty X. Cleaning him up with a long long range scythe. No one from Victoria's Secret wanted to engage under that Zeus ultimate. Mr. Stefan forced into the Aegis. Now Disapparate's form is being waited out. Johnny needs to find this kill here. He's going to heal from those back Harpy camps. His ultimate just came off of cooldown, but behind him is Spudio. Spudio is rotating in. He could be in trouble. Johnny has his ult, though. That's his get out of jail free card, and he flies on out of there. But totally, I want to talk about, because Spanify is chunking when he comes into these engagements. We saw him blow up Stefan on the left side, and when he came in just now one in hand took away a good bit too just now hitting the 13 minute mark he has fully stacked devil gloves ninja tabby and executioner yeah. one knock up here on the soul can be the ultimate doom and disaster from stefan especially without having book of the dead the way he was building the last game was very glass cannon based going for rod of tahuti going for a very early pen options but this time around he might need to reevaluate and go for a little bit more resilient option and i've been wanting to talk about fair Crit, going for that health option on the Zeus. He ends up going with Warlock Sash. That's a bit slower. You know, you got to get those stacks online for the Warlocks, but it provides so much health and it does provide some powers. They start up the gold, the Portal Demon at this point. Frosty Axe here, Gorgonzola, and Mr. Stefan already half health. He's going to have to back on out. Looks like that's the call. Fusify blinks in, but trying to force it doesn't get anyone with that Wrath of Terra. But now now Julio's here. Just out of range. Frosty Axe, though, is going to catch out Johnny, but no one there by his side. Fair Creek left alone there. He's going to detonate, but that Thor. Horns is buying Julio a freebie there. Able to take out Farrah Crick, standing in that lightning storm. No trouble coming his way as they get the return Crick kill and an important one on the Farrah Crick, who's been getting kind of big in the mid lane. Every single time you can kill Farrah Crick, that delays this inevitable stacking of the Warlock Sash, preventing him from getting that important health, making him easier to kill. But Portal Demon attempt number two from Burrito. They want some blood, considering Johnny has his ultimate. Johnny is looking to keep Julio away from the fight as we see Kispanify moving a little bit further forward, dropping down and trying to keep Fusify alive, but Julio goes into the ult so that he can't be interrupted. Not able to hit the site this Johnny, and now Kispanify getting pulled in by Frostyak. Knockup is not to create space. Julio very low in the back, but he's okay for the time Sibby. being. Sibby's looking for it, though. He's going to get stunned out by the ricochet from Spudio. Now it's Julio that's going to chase down Sibby. Frostyak locking him down right against the wall. Without an ultimate, there is no... There's no afterlife for this lord. 
Now Burrito getting a little bit too greedy over here by this portal demon. They've lost, it looks like, two fights in a row. Johnny now could be the next casualty of war. Spudio leaping over the wall. That's enough to clean up. Farakrick just kind of farming his mid lane. Now he could be in trouble. Has to back off, though, and had some help from Kaspanify. Kaspanify, luckily, right around the corner to save his mid laner. Gold here, not off for another minute and a half, but Victoria's Secret now wanting to use this two man advantage to go for the portal demon instead, wanting to just kind of heal back up and looks to play it very safe because the damage from Farrakirk and Fusify is still very important. Now the way Burrito engaged that last time was a nice attempt but Fusify missing his ultimate on Mr. Stefan definitely hurt their chances of succeeding. And the reason Burrito are playing this aggressive, they're up 3,000 gold still. It's 15 minutes in now. And even though Victoria's Secret tied up the kills with a couple of good team fights, they weren't able to get any objectives off the back of it totally. So Burrito are still way out in front. It's a kind of a dual-edged sword here from Burrito to force these engagements because if they lose any members, now they're building into the Nike passive stack of Gorgonzola, where if there's 10 kills for Victoria's Secret, they're going to get that one stack. And not only that, every time Farrakrick is fighting, he's not farming, which means he's not getting those last hits, which means he's not building that Warlock Sash stacks for the important health to survive in these team fights. And despite the fact that Mr. Stefan's been having a rough time in the mid lane this game, Julio and, and Spudio are looking really good for Victoria's Secret, so they can still rotate in and have a big impact as once again Portal Demon gets pulled. But it's Julio who's local. He's trying to get in, but Sibby's zoning him out, not able to deter them. The Portal Demon does fall. Now they're looking for a little bit more. As Sibby jumps in, Wrath of Terra lands down as well. Just a little bit too late from Farrakrick is the ultimate, but Johnny cleans up Julio anyway. Frostyak is going to get rooted into place. It's a lot of damage dealt on to Farrakrick but that's two dead from Victorious. The blink, Staff Sife's gonna miss, but forcing out the Aegis either way is still a nice little win. Now Burrito coming back over to try and find a Spudio, who's a little bit troubled out on his own. The root is enough, and he ends up falling, so it ends up being three kills overall going in favor of Burrito, because Spainify picking up a good number of them as well, which is really gonna hurt. Everyone wanted a piece of the Zeus juice, but Farrakrick was being a, you know, just a you shiny a drink piece of, of Zeus. Zeus. Yeah, they wanted to drink of the Zeus juice, you know, but those 24 stacks of Warlock Sash was just enough to survive every little ability. The Aegis was well-timed to be able to dance around the corner, not to mention Fusify keeping his mid laner alive with some very clutch roots. Fusify has been playing this Sylvanas pretty well aside from that one Wrath of Terra that we saw him be a little bit off the mark with earlier on. Everyone playing well for Burrito. That's why now they have the Gold Fury to go along with that Portal Demon extending that gold lead form up to about 6,700 in their favor. Experience is also getting pretty large at 5,000. Now Burrito have got that lead where they can start moving along. Considering it's at the 18 minute mark, this is getting a little dicey for Victorious. They need to find a way to shut down this aggression from Burrito. The blink plays from Fusify is what's really setting up the rest of the engages for Burrito. And it's very difficult for Victorious to kind of balance around it, considering how much area that one ability covers. And I want to get your opinion here, as we see Sibby kind of smacking it out with Julio on this right-hand side. How is Frostyuk on this been able to have an impact for him this game. It's just been non-impactful on this Kuzin, but whatsoever, because he's been on the defensive back foot the entire game. He wanted to make those blink offensive plays, but instead it was Burrito, four or five man grouping up on the right. Gorgonzola, where did your health go, buddy? Looking for the execute, it's taken by Johnny. He even gets the return ultimate for Mr. Stefan, who doesn't get too much ultimate out of it. So that's Gorgonzola no longer in this engagement as Julio continues to try and frontline. Wrath of Terror on the three members. We know how big his is right now. He goes on Julio first, but now Mr. Stefan is the call. And in the back line, Spudio dropping the Suns. Now in a little bit of trouble is the tree. He's going to get melted down by those Suns. A one-for-one -one support for support. But now jumping in is Sibby alongside the rest of his team. Sibby looking for more, but it's Farrakrik who gets the kill. Farrakrik looking for two. Drops down the ultimate on top of Julio, but Johnny's there Ooh. to help make sure that one goes down. Johnny gets a double kill. Okay. Johnny okay. gets a triple kill on Thanatos. And Burrito showing the Challenger Cup kid how it's done. I see you, Johnny, getting a nice little hot triple kill there, diving of middle Phoenix, sub 20 minute mark, making the plays happen for his team. And this is all without a fire giant for Burrito. They're just able to really take advantage of certain members. And to me, 
Tolly. This comes down to the early pressure that we saw Sibby and Johnny establish in the jungle. Yeah, there were a couple times where Victoria's Secret won the fights, but Burrito never took their foot off the gas. They had the pressure early game in the mid and the solo lane for the clear potential, and that's what allowed them to four-man collapse on that speed buff. The fact that Frostiac was like three levels behind from level seven versus 10 on Johnny, even getting his back harpy stolen by Fusify was not a good look for a jungler at any case. And this is something that Frostiac does every now and then. He'll switch things up by playing this Guardian in the jungle role, but he's most well known for playing these assassins and making the plays happen when they need to be, but instead not playing to, to his identity. At this point, he's just way too far behind Johnny, who's level 17, 8, 1, and 0 on the Thanatos jungle pick. It got off to a good start and has not given up the pressure since. Frostiac, on the other hand, sitting 0, 4, and 5. Gonna need to try and stick in there a little bit longer to hold out the now fire giant team of Burrito, who still have three towers up on the map to try and take and expose those Phoenixes. It's a tall task for Victoria's Secret to handle, but honestly, if they've come this far to qualify from beyond the Challenger Circuit team, uh, Cup and what they were able to do in game number one, they still could potentially look to exploit Burrito if there's over aggression inside tier twos and Phoenixes. However, with the fire giant sustained and Sylvana sustain alone, that's going to give them enough ability to kind of go in, take damage, soak it, and then retaliate for attempt number two. Frostiak at least was able to get his own speed buff as Gorgonzola leaps in aggressively. Spudio gets the stun out on Johnny and drops the suns down to. That's going to force out the sprint. Johnny using that sin of death to try and get away, but Gorgonzola with the rend had enough range to clean up Thanatos. And there, Frostiak with the Kuzenbow pulling Sibby back into three members. He's trying to bait him out, though, because Sibby is buying stuff. time for his left side. Phoenix, Farrakrik finding Julio. Sibby's going to sacrifice his life, but it sets up his team for the left side. Phoenix. And the bait is successful for Burrito. Yes, they give up a couple members on that right-hand side, but way more important, they took down Tier 2 and the Phoenix on left. Now Burrito have an exposed Titan. The mid Phoenix has no towers in front of it, and they've got a path back in, and they still have two minutes or just about on that Fire Giant on some important members. Farrakrik and Kispanify still have it. So last game, I talked about how after the 75,000 team gold mark, it doesn't matter the gold differential, but this time, this is well before that mark. 60,000 for Burrito, 46 for Victoria's Secret. Nearly 14,000 gold separates these two teams. And that's enough of a window to get the difference between five items versus three and a half from Victoria's. And we're at the point now where Victoria's Secret is going to need for Burrito to make some mistakes. Victoria's Secret need to make sure they're playing perfectly, capitalize on any toe out of line from Burrito, on any missed engagement from Burrito to turn this game back around because Burrito are far enough in control where they are they don't have to play perfect. That's true. They still have Fire Giant for one more minute. They're guaranteed this gold here. They're guaranteed that Tier 2 tower on the right, extending this 14,000 goalie to probably about 17,000 after the fact. And then they're gonna just going to wait out this Fire Giant to respawn here and then look to just hit that last nail on the coffin and secure their path towards the gauntlet, towards poppies. And you talk about how every drop of that gold lead is still relevant. No one on Burrito is six slotted yet. Everyone still has more items that can get to hit more of a power spike, to get a little bit more defense or to be a little more sustainable in these engagements. That's what's going to make it so difficult for Victoria's Secret if they want to try and make it back in this game. Fire Giant is going to fall off here in about 30 seconds, so likely Burrito will use that minute to regroup spin that gold, and then take that big late game objective. And Johnny has just been on fire here. This early game risk that he took with Aranga's mask paid off. Fully evolved now. Has the cooldown reduction, the movement speed, and the penetration to really make it worthwhile. But still, if he has enough gold in hand, it's still worthwhile to sell it for a little bit more damage spike. Maybe even going for a Titan's main, honestly. Or even for Mantle of Discord to survive engages once he dives the backline and get the stun off. And I like Farrakrit going for this Warlock Sash side of the Hind of the Urchin. It, it kind of achieves the same goal. It gives you a little bit more survivability, but it's a bit more in the middle. It's also giving you more damage. Even though it might not give you the actual protections, the health is also really important to buy you enough time. If you absorb enough abilities during a CC without your beads, well, then you're going to survive with the health, pop the Aegis to buy you some more time, and allow the healing from Fusify to really take into effect. And with the Lotus Crown from Fusify, you're going to get some protections from that item anyway. Yeah. So by you, as a mid-mage, not going for protections, it's not the worst case in the world, considering you still need to do the damage here on on your Zeus play. 
I really like the build we're seeing from Farrakrik, and it just highlights how far behind Mr. Stefan is in the mid lane. Frostiac also struggling. Mr. Stefan only has those three items finished, still working on it. Looks like his Rod at Tahuti, which has already been finished by Farrakrik at this point. So even if they get a good setup from Gorgonzola or Frostiac, the damage from them just won't be the same. We'll see what will happen during the Phoenix Sieges, but not wanting to do the Sieges before the previous step, securing their second Fire Giant of the game, 25 minute mark burrito Heck, just cannot be stopped. They're almost 20,000 gold in the lead. And that left Phoenix was already taken down, so it is just about to respawn, but it'll be that weakened respawn when that Phoenix comes back up. So it'll be just that much easier for them to take and maybe not even safe for Victoria's Secret to stand on at this point and try and make their defense. Looks like the call is going to be to let Johnny go bring up some minions and then push him in. And this is what we can kind of expect, the difference between this challenger team and an SPL team. Yeah. We're seeing Burrito truly make a statement here at the beginning of the gauntlet. Left side Phoenix has respawned as it looks like Frosty X is the one that wants to blink in and use his ultimate, but really no follow up for it. Johnny gonna be able to freely take it as Fusify finds a three man knockoff because Spainify deletes Frosty X right away in that one. Now in the back line, Farrakrik trying to get some more damage out, but Johnny is the one who cleans up. Julio, two quick kills. Phoenix falls as well. Mid Phoenix is the call now. Johnny blinks in, doesn't get the death sight for Mr. Stefan. Nice still under a lot of trouble anyway. Nice beats to prevent the knock on Mr. Stefan is gonna fall. That's three dead members. Burrito was like, hey, the engage from Frosty Egg happened. What kind of engage was that? Let's show him how to engage here. Fusify diving in backline onto three knockoff. It's going to be a nice kill from Spudio, delaying the inevitable, though. He's going to take a spill here. Four dead members, only Gorgonzola trying to defend his Titan. And Gorgonzola, this is way too tall a task for just one man. He gets deleted as well. Now it's only the Titan standing. Frosty Egg is here. Frosty Egg is reflecting, but you can't reflect enough damage to slow down Burrito, who are looking Looking like there's a difference between SPL and Challenger Cup level play. Oh, absolutely. I love the end play there also from Fusify is like, that's not an engage, mate. This is an, this engage, is an engage right here. <laughs> this three-man knockup from Fusify at the end just to hit that last nail in the coffin. Burrito were in absolute control in game number two through and through. And it was setting up Kispainify in particular to do an excellent job that game. I couldn't see it right at the end, but I'm not even sure if he died that game. He played so, so well, following up with that damage immediately, coming in with that Jingwei. even had some crit from her passive to help blow up targets. And that's what we saw. Fusify knock him up, and I'll knock him down. I mean, a little bit of healing from Fusify helps. You know, 6,000 oh, yeah. healing from his team. Helped him out also by invading those back harpies. You oh, know, right. Sylvanas that turned with the game around, totally. It did a little bit because it, yeah. just, it just slowly allowed Johnny to create more of a gap against Frostiac, and as a guardian jungle, you cannot be uh, you cannot afford to be that far behind. You can't make the plays happen. They were on the back foot the whole entire time. The blink from Frostiac was non-existent because they were on the defense. Well, that was only the first set here for you. So we do see in the Emberito are able to make it through. So now they'll be able to go up against Poppy. So if you got a second here, go grab a drink, go grab a snack. We got game two coming for you. Come on.